up, gang? Can Zerk, can Zilling, is he can Miller get a villain for the trip again? We are back. And when I say back, I mean like, bro, we are back on Dungan Rampa Trigger Happy Habit. Wait, no, we're, we're on Dungan Rampa 2 Goodbye Despair. What the heck? Last episode, we did the thing, and now we're doing the, the big thing. All right. Now then, let's begin with a simple explanation of the class trial. During the class trial, you will present your arguments for who the killer is and vote for who done it. Stop looking at me. If you vote correctly, then only the blackened will receive punishment. But if you pick the wrong person, I'll punish everyone besides the blackened, and that person will earn the right to leave this island. I'm sure you guys are starving by now, but let's get revved up and raring to go. Whoever survives will be treated to a fancy lunch. Guess what? Rabbit curry is on the menu. Huh? I'm not the main ingredient. Don't do that. I don't want to eat that. Ew. I'm here today because Coach Nekomaru risked his life to protect me. I'm going to be the one who avenges him. I'll definitely find out who the killer is. I'm definitely not tempted by curry. Got it? Uh, I got it. You seem to have an impressive amount of drool yo, coming from your mouth. Yo, yo, let's get serious. Hey, why don't we try going over the incident? Okay. We weren't able to leave Strawberry House, so I want to make sure we get a detailed understanding. Um, I discovered Nekomaru's body a little before 7 a.m. I headed over to Grape Tower for Monokuma Taichi and found the body there. Hajime and Chiaki were also with me. Hajime was with Miss Sonia and Chiaki that early in the morning? Don't tell me you three were together since last night! What are you going on about? I am not some woman with flexible legs. Uh, of course you're not. You're much classier than that. Yeah! With legs like those, I could probably do the splits real easy. What are we talking about? We just happened to run into each other on the first floor of Grape House and went to the tower together. Okay. And then... The three of us discovered Nekomaru's body. Okay. The body discovery announcement was made soon after. Akane heard that and rushed over. We heard the body discovery announcement too, from Strawberry House, obviously. As I recall, we found out the elevator was out of order, which left us stuck. That is true. So we decided to go to the tower for the time being and headed for Strawberry Hall. But someone even broke Strawberry Hall's door button. We couldn't go anywhere because of that. Thinking we should at least find some method to communicate, we set our sights on the lounge telephone. Forget these boring intros. Let's talk about the killer. Anyway, it's definitely someone from Strawberry House. What do you mean, definitely? Is it? I don't, I don't There's know, no bro. There's no way a chick would kill someone so cruelly. So it must be one of you Strawberry House dudes. I, I'm going to be honest. I still don't know who it is. I have no clue who it one is. Of you better hurry up and confess. Or I'll break all of you in half! You're the cruelest one here! Now, now. Enough with the lovers' quarrel. We need to think about this seriously. We don't have the luxury of discussing irrelevant things. The incident this time has many questions. The incident notwithstanding, I also have many questions. Then let's start with something even Miss Sonia can understand. The weapon. Well... The weapon is obvious, right? Uh, Yo! What the heck, you guys? The weapon! You can totally tell just by looking. Tell what the weapon is just by looking. Would it be that much of a mystery if it were true? Only thing at the crime scene that looked like it was a weapon was probably the hammer, obviously. Not that it is the weapon. I guess we should figure out the weapon. Okay, do I still remember how to play? The weapon was right there at the scene of the crime. Was it though? That pillar, huh? No, the hammer. Okay. The killer used that hammer. Did he? And beat the crap out of him. No, he no, didn't. That's wrong. <laughs> no, I can't accept that that hammer was the murder weapon. Why not? Why can't you accept it? A lot of oil was flowing from Nekomaru's body. Just like human blood, right? 
Mm -hmm. The hammer was used to beat Nekomar. We'd expect some oil to be on it, at least. But that hammer was clean. So that's why you can't accept that it's the murder weapon. Exactly. Yeah, but the killer might have wiped off the oil later. With what? Right. Well, obviously, to make the hammer look like it's not the murder weapon. I mean, if he did that, he might as well just take the hammer with him. Then why bother cleaning the oil? If they didn't want it to look suspicious, they would have discarded the hammer. Yeah. You're pretty insightful, baby gangster. Baby gangster? <laughs> Me? Just so you all know, I was trying to test you guys. Shut up, Soda. I thought, maybe you guys mistook the hammer for the weapon or something. It seems that was a waste of time. It seems Kazuichi is stupid. Then what was the real weapon used to murder Nakamaru? That's the problem. There wasn't anything else at the crime scene that looked like a potential weapon. I think somebody set up a trap for him. And what the actual weapon was is the pillar. They set it up so that the pillar fell on top of him. Then how about we look at it from a different angle? If it doesn't have oil on it, it's not the weapon. So whatever has oil on it must be the weapon, right? Actual weapon has oil on it. Something at the crime scene that had oil on it. It was the broken pillar. Let's see. The only thing with oil on it is that broken pillar. Then that pillar is the weapon. Coach Nakamaru got clobbered with that pillar. Nobody could withstand a blow from that pillar. Even if you used 100% of your muscle strength, it would be impossible to wield it as a weapon. Yeah, that's why it was set up as a trap. It fell on them. Somebody Whoa. set it up to fall on top of him. We tried to move it, right? <laughs> no use, barely budging. Yeah, that pillar was pretty freaking heavy. But there's one dude who could have lifted that pillar. Huh? Who are you talking about? Nakamaru. Coach Nakamaru's robot body. With that dude's super strength, lifting a pillar would be real easy. So he lifted the pillar, and then what? Yeah. Did he use it to beat himself? You mean Nakamaru killed himself? Don't be stupid. He ain't the type to commit suicide. Then even if Nekomaru could have lifted that pillar, it has nothing to do with the case at all. Well, I guess you're right. What the heck? It does bother me a little. The word suicide. By the way, the fourth murder of the killing school life was apparently ruled a suicide. No, that shouldn't matter. There's no way Nekomaru would commit suicide. That's a problem. If it's not the pillar, then there's no other weapon we can think of. Um, there may be a way to use the pillar as a weapon without lifting it. We'll be trapping it to fall. Huh? For reals? Yes, for reals. I see. So my gut was right after all. All right, it's up to you, Sonia. Prove that pillar was the murder weapon. Understood. Then I shall give it my all. Yeah. Sonia, here I go. Okay. Let's see what she's got. There's no need to lift that pillar. Okay. If the pillar was not lifted, beating him with it is beyond a dream. What about tipping the pillar over? Okay. They aimed right for his head in bullseye. That's ex yeah, that's what I said. Even I could probably tip it over. Considering the pillar's weight, it probably exerted a ton of force. Sonia, you go, girl! <laughs> I'm getting hella excited! Huh. The killer murdered Nekomaru by tipping over that pillar. Is that really it? Beating him with it is beyond a dream. Oh, I get it, I get it. Because it's the, 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 the fragments were under no, Nekomaru, so it couldn't have been dropped on his head. All right, I see. That took me longer than I Nekomaru would like to admit. The then there should have been fragments on top of his body. Huh? Fragments? The pillar fragments were scattered beneath Nekomaru's body, but there weren't any on top of his body. If the pillar had been tipped over and crushed him, the fragments should have been on top of his body instead. I briefly considered that too. 
But it's probably not what happened. It's possible that was just a distraction. Uh, I see. That was entirely my bad. If they didn't tip it over, then how did the killer murder Nekomaru with that pillar? They could have used it as a distraction. How much longer are you going to focus on the pillar? Just let it go already. There, there's no way I can let it go. I'm positive that Nekomaru was killed by that pillar. Why are you so certain about that? I just have a feeling. A feeling, huh? That's just your instincts. But we can't say for sure that that instinct is wrong, can we? Yeah, I, I, I do think that pillar is very important. Huh? There's another way to use that pillar to kill. You guys just haven't noticed it. Bash his head against it? Is that true? Then I shall ask you, what way is that? You guys, same as usual. You're unable to clear a path to the future with your own powers. So you just stand there and falter. What a waste of talent. And you all intend to fight the future foundation? You make me laugh. What did you say? Regardless, it's not like I want to die with the rest of you. So I guess I should lend a hand. Hey, Nagito, what the hell happened to you? Bro, tripping. How come you're not talking like a lunatic anymore? I've learned a valuable lesson. Ignorance is by far the greatest shame. Huh? What do you mean? Who cares? Just tell us how the pillar was I'm used saying, y'all doing all this chit chat. We need to survive. Well, first of all, the pillar itself is not enough. But when combined with a specific item, there's a way it could be possible. A specific item? Of course, the ultimate weapon. The ultimate weapon? Isn't that the thing you get when you clear the final dead room? Is it the wire, so, maybe? Nagito knows what the ultimate weapon is? Of course I know. But I'm pretty sure everyone else has seen it, you know? We've seen it? That's right. You've seen it clearly. Because I, the one who has claimed dominion over evil, am the ultimate weapon. Sure you are, buddy. I am he who cuts the insolent catalyst which flows out from the chaos with the sword of victory. Sure you are, pal. It's only fitting that I deserve to be called the ultimate weapon. Sure you are, buddy. No, you are far greater than the ultimate weapon. Since you wield your four dark devas of destruction. Don't, don't entertain him. I, I see. I don't know why, but I'm not liking this. Cut the bullshit and say it clearly. What is the ultimate weapon? It might be the wire. In order to clarify that, we first need to solve the secret of the funhouse. Huh? The secret of the funhouse? You still don't realize it? Jeez, get it together. You're supposed to be the symbols of hope, aren't you? Ah, I forgot. Except for Hajime. Of Yo, course. fuck you, nigga. Oh my goodness, bro. Except for Hajime? If we make it out of this, I'll explain it to you guys. Anyway, we must first clarify the secret of the funhouse, right? Then I think it must have something to do with the structure of the funhouse. Strawberry House leads to Strawberry Tower, and Grape House leads to Grape Tower. But in actuality, they are both the same building, and both houses are linked to the Central Tower. It is undeniable that such a sweet building structure is the secret of the Funhouse! Yeah, not only does that make perfect sense, but Miss Sonia's beautiful voice is just so soothing. Up on! Full show! <laughs> I shall leave this matter to your discretion. The two houses are connected to the tower in the middle. I thought that at first, but I ended up finding proof that completely contradicts that. All right, let's see it. In Probably truth, the strange feeling. Tower and Great tower okay. Are actually the exact same place. Are you sure? So that's the secret of the front house. Is that really it? I don't think so. It's weird to say they're both the same price. I mean, the walls are different colors. You're stupid. And the designs on the floor are also different. Okay. We've already settled this problem. 
Give it 10 years before you argue with Miss Sonia. Broken door not probably. The whole time I've been thinking the two tubs are the same building, but that was the only mystery. There's no way Nagato would mention it here. In truth, Strawberry Tower and Grape are actually the exact same place. Are, no? Alright, if it's not door now, then it's strange feeling. In truth, Strawberry Tower are actually the exact same place. No, that's wrong. I should have just started with that. I don't know why. I don't know why I switched. Both of those towers. Are they really the same place? I don't think so. Why are you asking that now? Do you harbor a grudge because my kingdom destroyed your homeland? What? Hajime, I won't tolerate any sort of rebellion. Shut up! I mean, doesn't it seem strange? There's a strange feeling, bro. When we went to Great da -da 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 -da. Nekomaru's body was in front of the door to Strawberry Hall. Yes. But when we went to Strawberry Tower from Strawberry Hall, his body was in front of the door to Great Hall. It's probably some kind of trick, like the floor rotating 180 degrees or something. If that was the case, then the other then the other door would have had the um, what's it called, chains around it. If it is, then see, that means it could have passed to the exact same place, right? If so, then what? You seriously think such a simple answer is the correct answer? Nagato, we understand that you're smart, but calm down, all right? Does that mean he's wrong? Oops, I guess I've said too much. If the floor didn't rotate, then that means we need to think about the structure of the building again. Bow down! Why are you arguing? Then how about this? Somebody moved Nekomaru's body. Who? Well, we were moving from Grape Tower to Strawberry Tower, but we should have all been together during that time. Even if they tried to move the body inside the tower. Then Monokuma did it. While we were moving, Monokuma quickly moved things around. But Nekomaru's body wasn't the only thing moved. Are you saying the broken pillar was moved too? You're just chatting. If it is too heavy to carry, let them roll it. Just like if there is no bread, let them eat cake. Sonia, you're just chatting! You chatterbox! There are many different ways. The body and the pillar could have been moved. The pillar could have been rolled, and Nekomaru could have been moved to a decree it was Monokuma's doing. No. Moving the body in the pillar in such a short time. That might be hard even for Monokuma, don't you think? It seems you have forgotten. Monokuma is surprisingly strong. Moving up the pillar, the body, everything at the crime scene. In the power of the feet, the pillar, the body, everything. There we go. Because how is he going to move blood? How is he going to move oil? Moving the body in pillar is possible. But it would have been impossible to move the oil on the floor. Huh? When the position of Nekomaru's body in the pillar changed, the oil surrounding his body moved too. Physically moving all of the oil like that is simply not possible, no matter how you look at it. Then it's impossible to think it was moved. I, I am terribly sorry. I cannot believe I got so fired up. Stop being stupid. It's all right. A fired up Miss Sonia is awesome. Shut up, Kazuichi. So what really happened? Does that mean the two towers aren't the same building? Hmm. We can't be certain of that either. I was wondering. What if? What if in actuality? No, never mind. Not when the experiment involving the handbook I left on the tower floor was a complete success. Yeah, the E handbook was still there. That's why we thought the two towers were the same building. If they're not the same building or two different buildings, then what are they? Hmm. Hmm. Hold on, she's thinking. No idea, huh? Mystery ties into the secret of the funhouse. We don't have enough clues to solve that mystery. And the only thing we can do is rely on the one person who has those clues. Nagito, I thought it would come to this. I knew my turn was coming up. Yeah, you the one that know everything. You got all the dang clues. You the one holding out on us. 
Fine. I'll tell you guys a big hint that can help you solve the secret of the funhouse. Give us the answer, not a friggin' hint. But then it wouldn't mean anything. I need you guys to do this class trial properly. It's also important for me because it will help me determine something. Determine? Is he talking about the traitor? So why did Nagito say that all of a sudden? Something happened to him? But how do we know your hint is any good? It's suspicious that you're the only one who knows it. I have a good reason for that. The reason I'm the only one who knows it is because I was the only one who performed the appropriate action. The appropriate action. The death game. See. You're talking about the final dead room, right? You cleared the life-threatening game there and found something, didn't you? That's right. The hint is what I saw after I cleared it. In the depths of the final dead room, there was a hidden room surrounded by concrete. And there, a small conspicuous window waited, all by itself. From that window, I saw some very strange mm. scenery. Strange scenery? Instead of explaining it, it might be faster just to show you. At an opportune time, I found a perfect camera in the final dead room. You took a picture? Yep. Nagato grinned creepily as he received the small digital camera from his inner See? pocket. This is it. And as he said that, he showed us a peculiar picture. Let me explain it to you again. I took this picture on the first floor of Strawberry House from the secret room within the final dead room. But don't you think it's weird? If the Funhouse's structure is what you guys have been thinking, then there's lots of things that don't make sense in this picture, right? Yeah. Lots of things that shouldn't make sense. And let's begin. Shall I call it thinking time? What doesn't make sense in this picture? Here. Yeah, that doesn't make sense. You said this photo was taken from the hidden room inside the final dead room, right? If that's the case, then that means it should have been taken from the first floor of Strawberry House. Yeah, it should have been. Then, this is definitely strange. This photo doesn't look like it was taken from the first floor. The angles suggest it was taken from higher up. I see. And is that it? Nagato said there's more. There are other contradictions contained in it. What doesn't make sense in this picture? The tower, right? Hold on! Dang, let me... This is the tower, there should be another one on the other side, right? Here. That's what I was trying to say! If the structure of the funhouse is what we thought it was... Grape House and Strawberry House should link to the tower in the middle. Which means, if you're viewing the tower from Strawberry House, you should see Grape House behind it. But in this photo, I don't see anything behind the tower. No shadow, no shape, no grape house at all. That's right. Good call. In summary, this is the truth contained in this photo. The first floor of Strawberry House is located in a high area, and Grape House is not behind the tower. It's not? Are you saying that Grape House is merely an illusion spell cast by Monokuma's cursed Shut eye? up, Tanaka! From this point on, do your own thinking. Now that you've finally met the same requirements as me, if you guys are truly symbols of hope, you can easily solve a simple mystery like this. My thing is this, bro. You're with us here. Just help out. It might be possible for Hajime to solve it too, even though he's just a normal high school student. 
I've been solving the- I've solved the last three! You already know about the other clue. The other clue? Talking about that one time? Why, hello there, Hajime. Oh yeah, the um, the secret way through the maybe I teleported. Yeah. You're referring to when you suddenly appeared on the second floor of Grape House, right? I'm asking you just to be safe. At the time, where do you think I came from? The top floor, right? Probably. Such sharp eyes. You so realized it already. The top floor. So the third floor? But the Monokuma archive should be the only room on the third floor of Grape House. What does it mean? Oh, was that thing just another hint to figuring out the mystery of the funhouse destruction? The reason Nagato appeared from the third floor. Using the photo we took, I might be able to find the answer if I just think about it. What is this? Logic dive. Bobby Tarantino to the digital month is pivotal. Smoky chronic no medicinal. Okay, I don't know the answers though. How do I jump? How do I jump? How do I jump? Okay, try. Why? All right, bet. Hold on. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Just a little bit. Of, hold on. Okay. Ooh, that was a close one. Question one. Is Strawberry House and Grape House both exist? Yeah, they exist. They both exist. If there was only one house... Yeah, if there was only one house, then we wouldn't be able to stay in different rooms. We would, um, the, oh, yo, okay, you're, you're wrong. You are dead wrong for that. You, uh, you, uh, you, you one of those. You one of them. You one of them. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. A strawberry house and grape house, same building or two different buildings. They're the same building. They've got to be. If they were two different buildings, we wouldn't be we would see we would see the other building. Yo, I, I need y'all to stop. I need y'all to stop this. I need y'all to stop this. Hold on. Yeah, hold on. Yeah. Hold on, y'all doing too much. Y'all doing entirely too much. Oh! See now you a little penis licker for that. Okay, hey, question three. How is Strawberry House and vertically? It's gotta be vertically. Only thing that makes sense. It's gotta be vertical. Oh man, I was not paying attention. I looked at my phone. It's all coming together. I looked at my phone and almost ran into the wall. Got it. I know the secret of the fun house. Then let me hear it. What kind of answer will you give, I wonder? In the picture Nagito took from Strawberry House, I didn't see Grape House at all. So where did Grape House go? There was only one possibility. It was in a position where it couldn't be seen from Strawberry House. Which means Strawberry House and Grape House are in the same building, but on different floors. Same building? Different floors? Then... The two houses aren't two different three-story buildings. Nope. They're actually one six-story building? Yep. You think about it like that. Based on Nagito's picture, it's clear where Strawberry House is located. Strawberry House is the floors below us. Crap. Oh, wait. No, yeah, he was in Strawberry House. My bad. I see. I'm, ov I'm over here. <laughs> I, I was thinking about Grape House, yeah. On top of Tripping. Grape House. That's where Strawberry House is located. Because of that, the photo taken from the first floor of Strawberry House was at a high angle. Altogether, this means the first floor of Strawberry House is also the fourth floor above Grape House. Oh, snap! I never expected that the two houses were connected vertically. But... What about the shape of the building? The two houses were completely different shapes. Um, Strawberry House is four-sided, and Grape House is six-sided, right? It never occurred to us that they were the same building because it was structured with two different shapes. A quadrilateral and a hexagon. 
older way to top each other to misdirect how we have perceived them. But a quadrilateral can fit inside of a hexagon. So it's very possible that Strawberry House is actually a hexagon with a quadrilateral inside of it. And the quadrilateral is what we say inside. Uh-huh. And it worked, didn't it? Disregarding the tower, we fully believe the two houses were two separate distinct buildings. In order to conceal the unique design of the fun house, Monokuma put us to sleep so we couldn't look at the outside of the building when he brought us to it. You've just been Kumad! What? <laughs> Don't you think a building full of so many surprises totally deserves to be called a fun house? Someone died! Then it's true? The building was really like that? That's right! Those two houses exist on different floors in the same building! Constructing a building like that on your own without my knowledge? How horrible! Then what about the towers? Are they arranged vertically just like the houses? Yeah, Strawberry Tower and Grape Tower should have also been different floors inside the same building. Strawberry, the, the, the tower is probably an, a big elevator. That's probably what it is. So when you are about to, um, when you want to enter from Strawberry Tower, which is above, and it's on Grape Tower, it just rises up. It's probably just an elevator. Just like Strawberry House was on top of Grape House. Strawberry Tower was also on top of Grape Tower. However, if they're different floors within the same building, why was Nekomaru's body in both places? Ah, your precious hammies don't know. But it's so simple. Alrighty then. I'll be the one who solves this mystery in a flash. Please watch me, Miss Sonya. Oh, Lord. Oh, I see. Do whatever you like. Oh, definitely make her watch me. I'm gonna stand out till she notices me. She doesn't like you, bro. Watch me debunk this little guy. Monokuma found good night button to the repeller chain, broken doorknob. Hey, what's in here? Let's see what he's gotta say I'm first. Gonna solve this mystery in a flash. Hurry up, dumbass! Thinking to the door now was changed. He's in one of the towers. Was actually a dummy. You mean a fake body? Nekomaru died with a mechanical body. It should be possible to construct a dummy from spare parts. You're a magnificent Gundam. No fair! You totally stole my spotlight. So which one was the fake body? Shut up! Just pick one of them. A dummy of Nekomaru's body exists. Does that mean the killer prepared it in advance? Something like that even possible? I'm thinking right now that I gotta do a reverse on mechanical body. What? Oh my goodness, that pisses me off so bad. I'm thinking I gotta do a reverse search on mechanical body and then shoot dummy because we're in a place where we don't have the tools to even make a mechanical body. For, uh, for a dummy it should be possible like we shouldn't even be able to make one of those because we don't have the parts necessary i'm gonna solve this mystery in a f and hurry up dumbass one of the bodies in one of the temples was actually a dummy no that's not it i mean my line of thinking would work but i guess that's not what they're looking for we already use strange feelings so i don't think it's that what no that's wrong Strange feeling. I have to use that twice. Uh, let's see. I guess that makes sense. Nekomaru's body wasn't a dummy. That can be proven by Kazuichi's account. Me? Remember when we moved from Grape Tower to Strawberry Tower? We thought the body had moved, and that's when you said. Not just that. The parts I carefully arranged when I disassembled the body. Okay, they should have made this a truth bullet instead of me having to put strange feeling. If I would have remembered this and they had this as a truth bullet, I wouldn't have wasted so much time. Right up until that moment, you were disassembling that tomorrow's body at Great Town, right? The killer couldn't have known how you'd take apart his body, so they couldn't have built a dummy. Unless Kazuichi was the one who built the dummy, 
then it would be a different story. Oh. <laughs> Miss Sonia, that's a pretty harsh joke. You are joking. Nah, right? bruh. Hey, kill Kazuichi. It's all right. Kazuichi is not the killer. If he was, he wouldn't have fixed the elevator or the button in Strawberry Hall. It'd be much more convenient for the killer if it stayed broken. I see. That is disappointing. I'm even more disappointed. Bro, she wants this man gone. However, even if Nekomaru's body wasn't a dummy, it's meaningless if we don't have the important answer. The reason Nekomaru's body was in both towers, even though it was supposed to be. The towers are. The tower is an elevator. It was simply moved. The body moved to a different floor. You can't think of a device like that. A device that moves things to different floors in the same building? An elevator! I gotta do a hangman's gambit for a freaking elevator, bro. Really? Is it LA? Yeah, LA. I need a V. LA. I, okay, that was an accident. I need a V. Okay, I got a V. I need an A. Give me an A. Elevate. That was an accident. Okay. Elevator. Elevator. talking about an elevator what are you saying nekomaru's body was transported using an elevator are y'all stupid where the hell is this elevator anyway it's the tower itself the inside of the tower is one big elevator which means the tower was designed so that the whole room goes up and down like an elevator. so whether you enter from strawberry hall or grape hall it all leads to the same room right so that's why we could only enter it from one side or the other. Sometimes when I pressed the door button, it took a while for it to open. I see. We were basically waiting for the room to arrive just like an elevator. P please hold on. If the inside of the whole tower ascends and descends like an elevator, then why is there a picture of a strawberry on the far back door when you enter from Grape Tower? To trick us. And a picture of a grape on the far back door when you enter from Strawberry Tower. To trick us. If the room just moves up and down like an elevator, there's no reason for the doors to change. Plus, after the incident, the far back door in Grape Tower had chains wrapped around it, right? But when we entered Strawberry Tower, those chains were gone. Not just that, but if I remember correctly, even the doorknob was broken off. <laughs> there are too many strange things. Was that tower really an elevator? Everything you said points to it being an elevator. Are they stupid? When you see people and things, make sure you focus on the good parts instead of the bad. What are you on about? What did you say? So, let's put aside what's changed and focus our attention on what hasn't. Oh, okay, okay. Why do we have to do that? It's fine. Come on. What does everything that hasn't changed have in common? Things that haven't that didn't change when we move between two towers. Okay, the body, the hammer, the the, the pillar. Shouldn't be anything strange about them. Not even the fact that they're all moved with an elevator. They were all on the floor. I see. Is it safe to say that all the items on the floor didn't change? And? Because it's an elevator. Because the floor. Mo it is a giant cylinder tower. With an elevating and de-elevating floor. Are like they're stupid. And why did the picture on the far back door change? If you can figure that out, you'll have the answer. 
The reason is because that elevator has something unique about it. <sighs> Only the floor moves. I see. So that's it. The elevator was designed so only the floor moved. Only the floor moved? Which means the whole room wasn't an elevator. Only the floor was. I thought that's, that's what we were saying. Doors in each tower. Which means on the first floor of Grape Tower, the door on the far back wall had a strawberry design. And on the fourth floor, which was Strawberry Tower, a different door on the far back wall had a grape design. Then, where did the different floors lead? I want to say they lead outside, but they're probably just for show. Yeah, to confuse us. Just for show? Why was something like that necessary? To confuse us. So we falsely believe that the doors were connected to where their picture signified. It was actually very effective. Because of that, we totally misunderstood the building's structure. I don't get it. But I guess it means whoever designed this building had a totally twisted personality. Did you hear that, Monami? Don't blame this on me. Take responsibility for yourself. Then I'll take responsibility and gently caress you. <laughs> Wait, there's no way that's gonna happen. Stop with the tasteless jokes. By the way, what does the chain on the far back door in Grape Tower mean? It was probably wrapped there by the killer to keep us as far from Strawberry Tower as possible. Hmm. Why? Because of that chain. You guys thought you couldn't enter there, right? Like you said, I could probably use these parts to repair that button, but... Seriously, hold on. Even if you do repair the button, what's gonna happen to the chain on the other side of the door? Chain? Yeah, we know this already. You don't need to worry about that at all. The killer destroyed the Strawberry Hall button, so we'd stay away from Strawberry Tower. Everything was done to tamper with the evidence so we wouldn't find out about the secret of the funhouse. The appearance of a body in the tower would contradict what we thought we knew about the building. In that situation, if we'd gone to Strawberry Tower, we'd have seen that contradiction firsthand. And using that as a clue, we might have discovered the truth. The truth that the two houses and the two towers are actually one complete vertical building. The killer wanted to keep us from learning that. That's why they made us stay away from Strawberry Tower. They destroyed the button and wrapped a chain around the door just for that? Would it really have inconvenienced the killer if we learned the true structure of the building? Probably. It would have been a major inconvenience. After all... This funhouse is strongly connected to the ultimate weapon that killed Nekomaru. What is the ultimate Hold weapon? On. You're progressing much too quickly. There's still a contradiction concerning the building structure. What? What a pain. It's fine already. Gundam, please proceed. Shut up, you Kazuichi. You said earlier that Strawberry House and Grape House are connected vertically, right? If so... How does the contact elevator supposedly transport us from one house to the other? By going up! Now that you mentioned, I completely forgot about that matter. If that elevator moves vertically, then when your back is facing the elevator, both towers should be on the same side. Oh my goodness. Nagito said that it was going 180 degrees. So it quite literally, possibly, probably, just goes like, just wraps around. But does this reflect reality? Inside Grape House, Grape Hall is on your right when your back is to the elevator. And inside Strawberry House, Strawberry Hall is on your left when your back is to the elevator. 
which means the houses are on exact opposite sides of the tower. Answer me, fiend! What does this mean? What does this mean? I agree. What does this mean? Two houses are connected vertically. The position of the tower should be in the same both houses. But the fact that when my back was facing the elevator and grape house, the tower was on my right. Strawberry house on the left. How can I break through this contradiction? Nagito's account, or at least that thing Nagito or Kazuichi, one of them said. If the two houses are connected vertically, the elevator should move vertically, not horizontally. Doesn't move vertically. However, at both houses, well, it does move vertically, but. Contact elevators behind you. The towers are in opposite directions. Which means your reasoning is clearly contradictory. What's with this iron curtain of teamwork? Gunnerman can knock out matching arguments. Sounds like it makes sense, but is that really correct? Vertically, not horizontally. No, that's wrong. You're wrong! The elevator wasn't just moving vertically. Isn't that right, Kazuichi? Huh? Me? It, come on. You used the elevator while you were holding that compass Nagito gave you, right? Ah, uh, that. Yeah, it was pretty strange. From start to finish, somehow the compass needle rotated 180 degrees. Rotated 180 degrees? Meaning, as the elevator moved between the two houses, it also rotated 180 degrees. was probably following the building's perimeter as it rotated to the other side. Which means the exit would be on the opposite side once you arrived at the other house, right? And thanks to that, the tower we saw on our right side when we arrived at Grape House appeared on our left side when we were at Strawberry House. Yes, sir! An elevator that rotates while it moves. Is that even possible? It's like something from an amusement park. Well, a fun house is an amusement park attraction, you know. And since the building doesn't really need to be structurally practical, it makes for some splendid fun. That's not splendid at all. You're inhuman. You say I'm inhuman, but I'm just a bear. So I was never human to begin with. I'm different from these lowly humans. Shut up. So we're done with the secret of the fun house, right? Yeah. Then let's start talking about the important stuff. Please. What's the ultimate weapon that killed Nekomaru? And how'd they combine it with the pillar? Huh? You still don't know what the ultimate weapon is yet? It's what I found at the octagon, you know? What is the octagon? I haven't heard about that yet. Oh, my. I can't believe I have to explain that now. As long as you know what an octagon means, you can solve this simple mystery easily. What an octagon means. An octa is eight. I see. Yeah. I haven't, I haven't learned shapes since third grade. An octagon is a shape with eight sides, right? I didn't expect you to know that. For a substitute reserve course student, you're quite knowledgeable. I guess I should continue listening. Where is the place befitting of the name Octagon? The befitting of the name Octagon is probably... Octagon. Probably at the very top of here. Octo. I don't see eight of anything. A place befitting of the name Octagon. I don't see an octagon. I do not see an octagon. Where is there an octagon, bro?
I'm too hot for this, bro. I'm too hot for this. I'm too hot. I'm too hot. What a freak is there an octagon at? I don't. Why don't one of y'all figure it out? Why don't one of y'all figure it out? Huh? Why don't one of y'all figure it out, bro? I don't see an octagon nowhere. There's no octagon here. I promise I'm looking as hard as I can. I just don't see a freaking octagon. I'm even looking at the freaking cut off. Like, I'm over here looking at this and seeing like, nah, that's just a triangle. Uh, I'm looking, I'm looking at, I'm looking at that. I'm looking at everything I can. There is no octagon. Here. What? You're talking about the secret room surrounded by concrete in the depths of the final dead room. Why is that place the octagon? Okay, I know what the octagon is, but why? Why is the octagon there specifically? You know how the four-sided strawberry house is on top of the six-sided grape house? Okay, I think I get what she's about to say. The final dead room is like you know, there's space still left on for the onto the hexagon. So the uh, space where there's still space is where the octagon is, and that's how bro dropped down to see us. And yeah, that's probably it. But oh my goodness, man. Oh my goodness, that was just. If you cut a four sided shape out of a six sided one, you get eight edges. It becomes an eight sided shape. Stupidest shit I've ever heard. Shit wasn't clever. That shit was fucking stupid as hell. That's it. That shit was stupid. Big bike tune saw fuck you, nigga. That shit was stupid as hell. That's basically the gist of it. The true identity of the octagon is that secret room in the depths of the final dead room. In actuality, that place contained various weapons. Then the ultimate weapon was there too? That's a little different. I learned the true identity of the ultimate weapon at the Octagon. Learned? The true identity of the ultimate weapon is the Funhouse. I was thinking that. Which means the killer used the building structure as their weapon and killed Nekomaru. Like me, the killer probably realized the secret of the Funhouse from the scenery and then thought of a way to kill, making use of the building structure. The fun house itself is the weapon, so they killed using the building structure? That's why the killer tried to keep us from learning the mystery of the building. But more importantly, using the building itself as a weapon? Such a spectacular crime. I'm not in the mood for your little shenanigans, bro. <laughs> Truly deserves to be called the ultimate weapon. The fun house is the true identity of the ultimate weapon. What does this mean? How did the killer use that to murder Nekamaru? And who was the killer who did that? Why hello, I just thought of a new bad word to call Monami. I can already tell when we please by this. Let me say it right away. I'm so used to insulin slander, I won't be hurt. A serious stu faulty, stu fatly. That's much more straightforward than I expected. Stu fatly, huh? That's not it, that's not it at all. Stupid, fat, and ugly. The perfect jet stream attack incorporating all three of these would be stu fatly. Huh? There's a fat hidden in there? Okay, everyone, all together now. Monami is a serious stu fatly. I'm not in the mood for your shenanigans, Monokuma. I'm not in the mood for your shenanigans. Hello, I hope your day is well. My day is not well, Monami. To be more energetic, or else my mental state won't be able to keep up. 
I don't care! Uh, my heart's something Shut up! We'll have a rain back, so what? Yeehaw! Ah, but be careful that you... And just like I say each time... I'm tired of you! Get out of my face! I... I never... Expected the funhouse itself to be the ultimate weapon. Oh well, let's just press on ahead. Uh, okay! Is it really alright to accept a situation so easily? I mean, that's not what's important. The thing that's really important is the killer who used the building structure. Like, who's Mekumaru's murderer? But is it really okay to believe the building is the weapon? Nagito said it, you know. There's no way I'd lie at such an important moment. I don't want to die either. What happened to the bastard who kept saying how much they didn't mind dying? He's right. There was a time when I thought I could become a stepping stone for your hopes, but I will sincerely retract that remark. Retract? I'm disappointed too, you know. If this was a murder for the sake of hope, I'd happily sacrifice myself. <laughs> you say such falsehoods, per usual. There is no such thing as murder for the sake of hope. Murder is simply murder. Thank you! Forcibly sacrificing others for one's own desires. Even one as diabolical as I would avoid such actions. I see. It's fine. Let's just leave him alone and find out who killed Coach Nekomaru as fast as we can. Just so you know, it's not like I'm getting hungry or anything, you know. Uh, Akane! You're drooling waterfalls? Nagito, as usual, I can't tell what he's thinking. I have no idea if he's serious anyway, or not. If the killer used the building structure, why don't we think about how they used it? How they killed Nekomaru. It might be better if we clarify the cause of death first, don't you think? Nekomaru's cause of death. He was horribly damaged as if he was beaten senseless with a blunt object. But if he was beaten with a blunt object, it wouldn't be a kill utilizing the blunt building structure. What was his cause of death? Yeah. Crap. Hold on, let me think. It couldn't have been the pillar. Falling? I see. Oh! That's it. I think he might have died from falling. How would that work? Because the elevator doesn't move when people are in there. Died from falling? <gasps> oh. oh. But he's a robot, so maybe he doesn't count as a person. If the funhouse's secret is that it's a structure where both towers and houses are vertically connected, then the killer made use of its height and caused Nekomaru to die from falling. Are you saying they pushed him off? Where'd they push him off from? That, I don't know yet. <laughs> don't just make things up when you don't know the method. Where in that building would you even be able to push someone off in the first place? Mm. Okay, at first I was thinking... At first I was thinking that the elevator was fast, so it sped down while, while he was in there and then dropped on him. But now I'm thinking that somebody messed up the... Now I'm thinking that whoever messed up the door, they basically forced it to malfunction and open and then push Mekamaru down. That's also possible. It might be possible in the tower. You could push him off the fourth floor when the elevator is on the first floor. Did you forget how the elevator functions? When it's on the first floor, the door on the fourth floor won't open. <laughs> Saying he died from falling is truly incorrect. You should burn in the flames of hell. Shut up. Mm, but my gut is going crazy right now. Nekomaru died from falling. Where did the killer shove Nekomaru from? If I'm gonna reach if I'm gonna reach out to the truth behind this incident, I need to solve that mystery next. on the first floor that was an accident that made me think broken um the broken doorknob the reason a doorknob is broken 
it might be the first thing I said. He's a robot, so it doesn't recognize him as a human. So if you turn on the elevator, it'll just drop down. And he'll be falling and he'll fall down after it. But in actuality, but in, in truth, he didn't know that. He didn't know it was an elevator. So when the floor started moving, he grabbed onto the doorknob. And eventually the doorknob broke and he fell down to the first floor from the fourth. Hold on, guys. Daddy Zeke might be on to something. You can't go through the door on the fourth floor. Hmm. It'd be impossible to shove off the victim from up there. Then, how about this? After locking Mechamaru inside the elevator, they moved the elevator from the fourth floor to the first floor and made use of the drop. Hold on, did you forget the elevator has a sensor? As long as there's a moving object inside, the other door won't open. I figured it out. Which means the elevator wouldn't have moved either. Shut up! That must be the threshold of that elevator. All right, I was so, I was kind of right. I was somewhat right. I was clo I was close to the truth. Hold on, did you? As long as there's a moving object. He wasn't moving. Someone made him go night night. That sensor should only work if something is moving. If Nekomaru wasn't moving inside, the elevator sensor wouldn't have detected anything. Could it be his sleep mode? Yes. When Nekomaru's goodnight button is pressed, all of his functions shut down, and he enters sleep. If he's in sleep mode, the elevator sensor wouldn't have noticed him, right? I see. So that's how... However, even if they moved the elevator in that manner, Nekomaru would have just moved along with it. There would have been no drop for him to fall and die from. Yes. Unless he was tied up. That's what I was about to explain before Kazuichi interrupted me. Silence, pest! Now you're calling me a pest? Silence, pest! A way to create a drop while the inside the elevator while Nekomaru is still in it. He seems to have an idea, but what way could that be? It's gotta be the, um... The wire, maybe. Yeah. I'm thinking wire. If you arrange it a certain way, you can cause the drop within the elevator. So you're telling us all to think about the arrangement, right? That arrangement is... The hammer is suspicious. Isn't it about time we went over the pillar again? What about the oil on the floor? The doorknob on the floor it seems suspicious. How about we all shut up and listen to what Chiaki has to say? Silence, pest! Silence, pest! Don't be so cold. Huh. What if I start to enjoy it? What? Nakamura, how, how can you create a difference in elevation? Get a certain, you can cause the drop within the elevator. Okay. So you're telling us all to think about the arrangement. That arrangement? The hammer is suspicious. Isn't it about time we went over the pit? What about the oil on the floor? The doorknob on the floor seems suspicious. Bro, move! We all shut up move! On the floor it seems Oh, snap! I agree with that. Let's go! It was wired. Didn't the doorknob have scrape marks on it? Did it? That might have yeah, been it, where it got scraped by the wire. Mmm. They tied him up. They tied him up to the doorknob so that when it fell down. So that when the elevator went down, he would be suspended. Eventually the doorknob would break and he would fall down with it. Is that the same wire that was tied around Nekomaru? The tip of that wire was tied into a loop. Mmm. If the elevator moved while that loop part hung from the doorknob. If they did something like that, he would have been suspended in midair. That's right. He was suspended in midair. Huh? The killer tied up Mekamaru with the wire while he was in sleep mode. Tied the tip of the wire into a knot and hung it on the doorknob to the fourth floor. With that, they moved the elevator from the fourth floor to the first floor of Great Tower. And suspended Mekamaru in midair. 
That's right! He was so well hung! <laughs> Kinda like... You better not finish that that You're song. weird! The killer took advantage of the elevator's unique feature. Only the floor moves. By doing that, they created a drop so Nekamaro could fall to his death. Too easy! So what if they created a drop? There's no way you can make him fall and die with just that. Why? If Nekomaru is suspended in midair like that, then how do you get him to fall? Because if he's suspended in midair, he won't die if he doesn't actually fall. Are you stupid? Even if they suspended Nekomaru from a wire, how would they make him fall? There's no one in the tower to push. There's no way they could do that. It doesn't mean someone had to push him off. It's possible that he fell on his own. What? Nekomaru fell on his own? Nekomaru should have... If he was sleeping, there's no way he could do that to himself. <laughs> Now's the time, but in that case... You still won't be able to exploding the elevator with next is just impossible. End of story. Amaro should have still been in sleep mode, right? Huh? To cut through those words. The clock? What do you think would happen if Nekomaro woke up while he was suspended upside down in <gasps> the Oh, that's what happened. I thought he was just heavy, so he fell. Oh, but the clock woke him up. Okay, that makes sense. What are you saying? Like, how would he even wake up? He has an alarm inside his body. As long as it was on, it would have deactivated his sleep mode. Which means the killer set the alarm before they suspended Nekomaru. If you woke up from an alarm and realized you were hanging upside down and had no clue why, if something like that happened to you, you would start panicking a lot, right? Yeah. Instinctively, your body would start moving. Nekamaru probably did exactly that. And then, in order to make him fall from the force he was generating, the wire was hung on the tip of the doorknob so it would easily slip off. In actuality, the scrape marks caused by the wire were near the tip of the doorknob, right? But Nekomaru didn't fall because the wire came off, right? He fell because the entire doorknob came off. When Nekomaru awoke, he must have struggled much more than expected, which caused the doorknob to break off. Was that unexpected for the killer too? Probably. Well, that's probably it. If they knew it'd leave behind evidence like that, they would have at least tried to do something to cover it up. The reason that even happened was because... In that case, I'll use my full power. With a fierce roar, he put his all, all his power into grabbing the doorknob with both hands, but not yet. Here it comes. Who was with us when we did this? That's really the case. Then that's the clue Nekomaru left for us to find. See. So that's how Nekomaru fell to his death. Who was with us when he did that? Who saw? Who saw him doing that? Do you finally understand now? Yeah. It appears it's just as Miss Sonia said. I'm just a pest. No, I'm not just a pest. I'm a total fucking pig. Isn't that right, Miss Sonia? If I'm a fucking pig, you can say so. No, I believe you gave your all. Hey, why aren't you teasing me anymore? This guy, he gets off on this. Uh. So thanks to that alarm, Nekomaru ended up falling while he was still hanging upside down. Who was with us when he said that? I feel like that who the killer is, because they were there when when they were there to see how strong and sturdy the, the, the handle was. That doesn't mean he just crashed straight into the floor. Of course, you know that too. Yeah, he fell into right? the pillar. Yeah, he fell into the pillar. I see. When Nekomaru fell to the floor, he ended up colliding with the pillar. Isn't that it? Finally, the pillar! 
So that's how the pillar shattered, and why oil was spilled all over the place. See, I told you the pillar was the weapon. My gut was totally right. Well, the pillar was a bonus. It's not even clear if the killer intended that, or if it was just a coincidence. At this point, it is quite difficult to find a clue that will lead to the killer. Then what about the alarm? I'm positive the alarm was set for 7.30 a.m. And if we map it out from there... Wasn't it Fuyuhiko that was with us? I might be remembering it wrong. But it was Fuyuhiko who was with us, right? It wasn't Gundam. So Gundam could probably have one of his hamsters do it, but I don't think it was him that was there. I really don't remember who was with us though, but I remember, I'm pretty sure it was one of the boys. Hold on, baby gangsta. Stop calling me baby gangsta. What'd you just say? Did you say the alarm was set for 7.30 a.m.? You didn't check it yourself. Nekamaru's alarm was set for 7.30 a.m. Nah, that's impossible. Because even though I slept in a little, I still got to the tower at 7 in the morning. N now that you mention it, so did I. There was no way I could be late for Monokuma Tai Chi, so I lurked for Great Tower before 7 a.m. And if we found Nekomaru's body there, it would have been before the 7.30 a.m. alarm went off. It appears yet another contradiction has been birthed. How were you able to discover Nekomaru died at 7.30 a.m. when you went to the tower at 7? Th that's what I want to know! There's one after another. I can't choke up at a time like this. Just a little more and I'll be able to reach out to the truth. To definitely be a clue to break it through this contradiction. It's the alarm. Not the alarm, but the clocks. They've been messed with. We headed for Grape Tower. Before 7 a.m., I am certain. But the alarm inside Nekomaru's chest was set for 7.30 a.m. Nekomaru died because of that alarm, right? His time of death and the time the body was discovered. One of those must be an illusion. The killer probably did some tampering. They probably messed with the clock inside Nekomaru's chest. That's gotta be it! Alright, I figured it out. Before 7 a.m. But the alarm inside ne was set for 7. Nekomaru died. His time of death in the one of those must. Killer probably did some. He probably messed with the clock inside Nekomaru's. No. No, that's wrong. No, the clock inside his chest was a radio clock, so it would have been impossible to mess with. So you're saying there's no way the killer could have tampered with a clock? Maybe the clock Miss Sonia saw was the one that got tampered with. Yes. The clock inside Grape House? That's what I'm thinking too. No, I checked all the clocks inside the Fun House. Oh, that's what I asked you to do. So you really listened to me and checked all the clocks. And because of that, I can confidently declare that all the clocks had the same time displayed. It's for you, Hiko, bruh. Just because they had the same time displayed, well, hold on, no, because that's not what he said. I was about to say it's Fuyuhiko. He's lying about the clock not being tampered with. But he didn't say they weren't tampered with. He said they were. They all had to have the same clock displayed. Just because at the same time displayed doesn't mean they weren't tampered with. If there's no possibility that the time was tampered with, then we must doubt that human's testimony. Please believe me, we are not lying. Then, maybe it's a misunderstanding? I never misunderstand! I'll crush you into dog food! This time-related contradiction. I don't think I should doubt the testimony. I should doubt the clock. Exactly. No mistake that something was done, but what was it? How's we've overlooked something? Maybe we're misunderstanding something. 
If I focus and think, I should be able to find the answer to that mystery. Another logic dive? Bro, I'm about to jerk off the nut all over the computer, bro. Y'all making me mad. Hold on. What? Yo! Yo, what is y'all do? Yo! I'm not a skateboarder, bro. Y'all can't be having me do that. What club was tampered with? The building's clocks, obviously. Come on now. Come on now, lightweight. Hold on, hold on. Look at your boy. Okay, 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 okay. See, now y'all doing too much, y'all doing too much. See for your girl. Hold on, which house had the wrong time? Both, they both had the exact same time, so they both had the wrong time. Come on now, I'm the GOAT. Y'all don't really understand how I, I, I really be smart with this, bro. It's all coming together. It's all coming together. We're all coming together. You said you checked all the clocks inside the building. Isn't that right, Fuyuhiko? Yeah, none of the clocks had the wrong time. But what if all those clocks have been messed with? What? All the clocks? All of the clocks, all of the clocks. So even if you checked all the clocks inside the building, there's no way you'd have noticed it. Uh-huh. I see. So the killer messed with the time inside the whole building by changing all the clocks. <laughs> so that's what it was. There's no way I would have noticed that. This is truly fantastic! Now's not the time to be pleased. More importantly, how much was the time off? She's right, that's the main problem. I need to clarify by how much the time was off after the killer messed with the clock. But definitely the next mister, I'm gonna reach the truth in one go. If the time in the building was all messed up, then we can only rely on Nekomaru's radio clock. Mm -hmm. The time of death. It's clearly 7.30 a.m. Yes. The problem is, what time would 7.30 be? In our time. Are there any clues that can be used to narrow that down? If only I heard the sound when he fell. It would have been a great clue. Or his scream. He's not the type to let out a scream. If only Nekomaru's alarm was loud enough, we would have heard it too. There's no point in saying that. If does not exist in this world. Let me look at the accounts. Oh, Fuyuhiko! He saw, bro. There we go. I agree with that. Like three of those bullets would have worked for that. But all right, let's go with this. That's right. We should have heard the sound he made when he fell. Wasn't it that rumbling noise? Rumbling? I thought it was just an earthquake, so I went back to sleep. Was that the sound from when Nekomaru fell? Well, a huge body fell from the fourth floor to the first. And the pillar fell with it. It's obvious we'd hear the impact sound. We heard that noise too. It was when we were gathered at the Strawberry House Lounge. What is it, Sonia? Oh, well, that sound everyone heard? I did not hear it at all. Huh? You probably didn't hear it because you were sleeping. I could not sleep at all. I was awake the whole night with hunger pangs. There's nothing to worry about. What's important is that rumbling noise, anyway. If we use that rumbling sound as a reference, we might be able to figure out how much our time was off. I heard that sound probably around 5.30 in the morning. Huh? You can tell? I instantly woke up and left my room. And that's when I saw the clock in the lounge. That's a lot work, Akane. That rumbling sound we heard was at 5.30 a.m. It's like the answer to our quest off by two hours. Nekomaru's alarm went off at 7.30, and if we heard the sound of his impact at 
That means our time was off by two hours. Two hours? That much? We were starving pretty badly. There's no way we would have noticed. Plus, the funhouse has no windows. And there weren't any Monokuma announcements either. However, for what reason did the killer alter our perception of time? The reason is obvious. So they could lure out just Nekomaru. Lure out only Nekomaru? If you messed with the clocks and used a specific thing, you definitely get Nekomaru to the tower alone, right? That's, I said that earlier. I said that earlier, didn't I? I think during the investigation, I said that they were probably... They changed the they changed the clock so that only Nekomaru woke up when he was supposed to and went for Tai Chi. From there, the killer's plan was a splendid success. That's all it means. That's messing with time. The killer also used a specific thing. The uh, Tai Chi. I see. That's it. The killer made use of the Monokuma Tai Chi activity in the morning. How did they use it? We were required to go to Great Tower every morning at 7 a.m. for that activity, right? But if they mess with all the clocks inside the building, what would that do to us? We wouldn't be able to attend on time, but that wouldn't affect Nekomaru. His radio clock had the exact time. That's right. In doing so, the killer was able to lure him to the tower by himself at the precise time. When I witness Nekomaru early in the morning... If I recall, you witnessed Nekomaru around 5 a.m. And if that time was also two hours off, it should have been 7 a.m. Yeah, that's pretty much it. At that time, he was heading over to Monokuma Tai Chi, right on schedule. Realize what Monokuma meant when he said those words. Ah! Too early. He didn't even ask you yet. Oh my goodness. How outrageous. I honestly didn't expect everyone to ditch Monokuma Tai Chi. But it turned out like this after all, so I guess it can't be helped. When you said everyone, you were including us, right? We thought we came to the tower on time, but in truth. It was way past the meeting time. Aw, oh, jeez! That's... well, how should I put it? Uh, what was it? You know, tripping over a foot, or something like that. Slip of the tongue? Are you talking about tripping over someone else's fall? What? Wrong! Too bad! Liar! I'm right! That's not it! It's incorrect! That's definitely the correct answer. You always get so stubborn like this. Let's just ignore the peanut gallery. Now that we've found out how the killer lured Nekomaru, the number of suspects has drastically decreased. Huh? Hey, why would that decrease the number of suspects? Don't be a friggin' liar! You'll know I'm not lying when you listen to what Fuyuhiko's going to say next. Huh? What the hell do you mean? You witnessed Nekomaru going toward the tower. Did something else happen after that? Are you talking about that alarm? Hmm. Alarm? A little while after I witnessed Nekomaru, the clock in the Strawberry House Lounge started going off. Plus, it was just before that rumbling sound occurred. That's it. So that's what it is. If Nekomaru died when the rumble happened, then whoever doesn't have an alibi at the time is the prime suspect. Really? Was there anyone who didn't have an alibi at that time? I remember. The sound was so loud I couldn't help bolting from my room. But there was one guy who never left the lounge. We were both on the same floor. It's pretty weird that bastard never came out of his guest room. Which means that person does not have an alibi for when Nekomaru fell? Who is it? Who's the bastard?
I don't know. I don't know who the bastard is. I don't know who the bastard is. I don't know who the bastard is. Okay. Oh wait, Nagita. You're the only one. I was I don't think the it's Nagito. It's you, right, Nagito? Nagito makes the most sense, but I don't think it's him. That's right. Nagito wasn't there. Yeah, but I don't think it's him though. It's just me, Gundam, and Fuyuhika. You didn't come out. Even though the alarm was going off like crazy, you weren't in your room, were you? If that's the case, where were you? Please, say something. If you don't hurry up and answer, I'm gonna suicide dive you! If I may be frank. No, you're not, Yuta. Even if I wanted to go to the lounge, I couldn't. You couldn't? What do you mean? <laughs> It's merely the foolish talk of the week. Not only did I not hear the alarm, I never even heard that rumbling sound. He couldn't? You're definitely fucking lying. Uh, however, that is also true for me. Yeah, both of them, neither one of them heard the rumbling sound. It is obvious that I did not hear the alarm in Strawberry House. But I did not hear the rumbling sound either. Is that not strange? I mean... Everyone else heard it. To be honest, it's not just them. The same goes for me too. Are it, is it the people that were staying in the high class rooms that didn't hear it? The pe the people staying in high class rooms didn't hear it. We know Chiaki and Sonya were both staying in high class rooms. If I remember correctly, Nagito won the rock, paper, scissors that allowed him to stay in a high class room. Deep sleep, so I thought that's why I couldn't hear it. But it wasn't that. I probably couldn't hear it at all. Couldn't hear it? What does that mean? You still don't know. Think about what the three of us who didn't hear a sound have in common, and I'm sure you'll figure it out. Sonia, Nagito, and Chiaki, the secret, what are they, they have in common? There's too much going on. What the heck? There's too much going on. There is entirely too much going on, bro. Oh my goodness. I got it. Nagito, Sony, and Chiaki. The three of you were staying in deluxe rooms, right? If I recall, the deluxe rooms are... Not a bite of my quality grid. No, that too is soundproof. Soundproof. The reason we could not hear the rumbling noise. That's right. It was because the deluxe rooms have superior sound insulation. You actually noticed that. Nice catch, Hajime. Are you using your ultimate reserve course student talent? Bro, shut up! Now then. You guys must understand by now, right? The true identity of Nekomaru's killer. Hold on a sec. Why does that lead to who the killer is? What? Why? Well, that fact just now is a very important clue and a decisive factor in identifying the killer. There's two deluxe rooms in each room. In each run, there's two deluxe rooms. Chiaki didn't hear it, he didn't hear it, he didn't hear it. Who was staying in a deluxe room on the boy side? Nah, but if, depending on who it was, they might have just been in the lounge. I don't know. Decisive factor? That's not it. I feel like I understand what Nagito means. The killer among us. The killer who murdered Nekomaru.
I have no clue, bro. Like, I still don't know. Oh my goodness, I don't know at all. I do not know at all. Let me think about it. Let me really sit here and think. Wait a second. If I remember correctly. No. No, that's wrong. Never mind, never mind, never mind. Because we didn't go downstairs until the Tai Chi thing. So it makes sense that Sonya was down there for Tai Chi. Okay, never mind. It's not Nagito, it's not Chiaki, and it's not Sonya, since they couldn't hear it at all. Unless they just weren't in their rooms, which I doubt. But we haven't, they haven't, they haven't, we understand why. They don't know about the sound, so we know they're prop that there's a good chance they're not lying about it. Kazuichi and Fuyuhiko, they were both in the lounge. There's no way he killed himself. But everybody has an Unless someone used that. It's Fuyuhiko. It's Fuyuhiko. That's why he was in the lounge when it happened. He, he killed, he killed him. And then like Nagito said, if the person who completes the final death game, they, they can move from place to place without the elevator. So Fuyuhiko killed him and then use the little way to get to the elevator that drops you in the um that drops you down in the uh, uh the lounge. Okay, that's what I'm going with right now. That's what I'm going with. All right, I was wrong. Then who did it? Did he kill himself? That's the only thing that makes sense. Gundam? You're the only one. What? Gundam? There's something I want to ask you. When the alarm rang at the Strawberry House Lounge, you rushed over there too, right? What's wrong with that? If the bell of catastrophe rings throughout the night, it is the universe's providence to stop it. Why were you able to hear it? Was he also in a deluxe room? I was right. Well, I was knew it. You had to think about who is in the second deluxe room. But I thought Fuyuhiko was in that deluxe room. I didn't remember that. I, I, I didn't remember that Tonika was the one who, who, who was in the deluxe room. I thought it was Fuyuhiko. So I didn't catch it. Oh my goodness, yo. That's so clever. Oh, bro, that's hard. You're what? I mean, you were also staying in a deluxe room, right? Yeah, okay, so I was right. I knew it had to do with who was staying in the deluxe room. I knew that. I knew if they were staying in a deluxe room and they rushed out, that means they knew something they shouldn't have known. I knew it. I knew it and I knew it again. But, you know, I just didn't know that it was Tonica that was in the deluxe room. I just happened to forget that. Nagito was staying in a deluxe room in the same house on the same floor, and he couldn't even hear it. So why were you able to hear that alarm? Uh, now that you mention it... There is only one possibility. You weren't in your room at the time. That's why, even though you were staying in a deluxe room, you still went to the lounge. Am I right? Gundam... Um... You have some sort of explanation, right? Gundam probably couldn't return to his room because of Fuyuhiko. Me? After you saw Nikomaro heading to the tower, you stayed at the lounge for a while. 
Am I correct? Until the moment that alarm started ringing, right? If you were in the lounge for that long, the killer who had left earlier obviously wouldn't be able to go back. Even though Mekamaru's murder was a death trap that utilized the alarm in his chest, the killer still needed to prepare the murder in advance. Like putting Nekamaru in sleep mode and tying him up with the wire. In order to do that, the killer needed to be waiting for Nekamaru at the tower. Which means when Fuyuhiko witnessed Nekamaru, the killer was already at the tower. And once they tried to go back, they couldn't because Fuyuhiko was at the lounge. In their original plan, the killer should have returned to their room before the alarm in the lounge went off. And they were supposed to stay in their room. They weren't planning to come out and go to the lounge. Which means they wouldn't have heard the alarm or the rumbling sound, thus proving they were in the room. Just like us. The best case scenario would have been if those two in the lounge had gone to check the deluxe rooms. After all, if they personally saw the killer sleeping in their room, it gives the killer a stronger alibi. Unfortunately, they failed to secure that alibi. I was in the lounge. So the killer couldn't go back to their room and ended up hearing the lounge's alarm. Hey, what are you doing? Raxxas is louder than the Supreme, blah, blah, blah. Making all that noise, yeah. But why'd you come out? You should have hid till the excitement died down. If Gundam tried to hide, and if those two went to his room to check on him, he would have been found out. That would have been the worst possible outcome. That's why he couldn't just stay hidden. If those two had just checked the deluxe rooms as planned, that would have been ideal, but... How ironic. The moment Fuyuhiko set foot in the lounge, your plan was doomed. G Gundam? Please, can you at least say something? I'm disappointed. I, I, bro, when I was talking to my boy Sunny about it, when Nekomaru first died, I looked this man in the face and I said, I don't think Gundam could do this. I don't think I don't think Tatanika would kill somebody. I said that, bro. I said that he was probably laughing so hard. I said that. Like I really had faith in you, Gundam. I had faith in you. I thought you was better than this. I thought you was better than this, bro. My heart broke. Answer me this, including myself in my four dark devas of destruction. How many ears do we possess? The answer is 10. That's right, I possess 10 ears. That means I have five times the hearing of a normal human. The soundproof system here may as well not exist. Shut up, Gundam. Is that your argument? You bastard. Do you understand the situation you're in right now? D do not panic. The truth shall now commence. At the time, I left my room to go to the bathroom. By coincidence, I heard the alarm. There aren't any bathrooms there, though. That's right. That's all it was. The world is always so simple. Are you saying it was just a coincidence? Isn't that timing a little too perfect? And yet, I'm being suspected by all of you. It seems it was actually horrible timing on my part. I see. You're still holding out. Well, you don't have to admit it. We're going to decide who the killer is with the majority vote anyway. So, why don't we just go ahead and start voting? It's obvious that Gundam is the killer. Uh, hold on a sec. You know, Hajime, this class trial, this killing, it's merely the opening act, you know. Hey! What do you mean the class trial is just the opening act? Perhaps I should say it's just a farce? Just a boring farce. So boring, so stressful. I'm so painfully bored that I might develop stomach ulcers. Seriously, let's just hurry up and finish this before I collapse from poor health. Nagito, 
something definitely happened to you, didn't it? Mm -hmm. What is your issue? At some point during the investigation, your behavior became even weirder. What? What actually happened? Did you discover something? <laughs> well, let's just leave that one for later and finish this opening act already. Ah, you said opening act again! Please hold on! We have yet to hear Gundam's rebuttal! But he's completely shut up. Perhaps he can't argue anymore. Gundam! <laughs> I was simply at a loss for words after being dumbfounded by your pathetic assumption. In fact, I shall deny the very basis! Your assumption has been wrong since the beginning! Since the beginning? Based on your assumption, I hung Nekomaru from the fourth floor of the tower and made the floor descend to the first floor. From there, after returning to Strawberry House, I was present when the alarm at the lounge went off, correct? Although going to and fro is busy enough as it is, how would I be able to travel between both houses anyway? I see. The contact elevator was broken. As I recall, the killer tampered with the Grape House control panel, which shut down the elevator. Plus, the stopped elevator should have been facing the Grape House side. If so, the human who used the elevator would have left it at Grape House. For these reasons, it's an indisputable fact that the killer destroyed the elevator at Grape House. And what's wrong with that? If the elevator was broken at Grape House, he wouldn't be able to return to Strawberry House. However, I was already at Strawberry House. I was present when the alarm in the lounge started ringing. Which means your assumption is clearly wrong. Are you serious? And here I thought it's already been decided. <laughs> Have you learned your lesson, pitiful humans? You cannot overcome this contradiction. That's wrong. If something is obviously wrong, that's when a contradiction is born. There's no such thing as a contradiction that can't be overcome. What? That elevator was... the only means of travel between the two houses. No, that's not true. As long as that elevator was broken, it's probably a revolution probably. Your assumption collapses. Plus, the elevator was broken at Grape House. If the killer cannot return to Strawberry House, since I was at Strawberry House at that time, there's no question that the following crime is impossible. It would have been different if they had an accomplice. Or if there was a secret passageway. How much longer do you plan to lecture me? Why don't we stop this already? That elevator was the only means of travel between- No! No, that's wrong! No, there should have been another way to move between the two houses without the elevator. Such a method does not exist! Then why don't we ask the person who actually used that method? You're the only one! Nagito, you should know. Uh, what are you talking about? Oh my goodness. Don't play dumb. You appeared so suddenly that one time because you used that method, right? I guess so. Why are you here? You look so stupid, bro. <laughs> like, there's a secret passage connecting the first floor of Strawberry House to the third floor of Grape House. Isn't that right? Jeez. Once again, I let the reserve course show up. But you're right. There's a door on the floor of the Octagon, which is on the first floor of Strawberry House. After I opened the door and went down... Surprise, surprise! I ended up in the Monokuma Archive, which is on the third floor of Grape House. 
Meaning, the third floor and the fourth floor are actually connected. Plus, once you've cleared the final dead room once, you can pass through it as many times as you want. If they use that secret passage, they could have gone between the two houses as much as they want. Infinity Unlimited Flame! What? However, what if the killer was unaware of the existence of the final dead room? There's no way they didn't know. That is merely an illusion you have fabricated from your own suspicion. <laughs> if you value your life, you should stop with your scrutiny. There's no way I can stop. Did you say? Don't make me angry. You wouldn't like me when I'm angry. Not like a child. Even if the turbid box doesn't exist, you could travel through multiple planes. Provided you use a spacious wormhole. However, how frail, frail, I say! Your decayed illusion. Shall I feed you to the progeny of vile deities? Get it! I already proved the secret passage exists. The secret passage was at the Octagon. Know the limits of your own reasoning! You say the killer went to the Octagon? Don't bark, you cur! If you don't want to try, at least pray to the key which dwells in the light! Problem means try providing evidence that the killer went to the Octagon. If you don't want to drown in the mail. I knew it! I knew the, from the beginning that the wire was the weapon! Since we first started- The wire used to string up Nekomaru's body. The hammer that looked like the weapon, and the chain on the door in the tower. Those are all the items that weren't in Funhouse. Where did the killer obtain them? The only place I can think of is the Octagon. There were various weapons and tools there. I'm pretty sure I saw stuff like wires, hammers, and chains too. Since those items were used in the crime, there's no doubt that the killer went to the Octagon. <laughs> If that's the case, you obviously know about the secret passage too, right? <laughs> it seems this is the end. Normally we'd end up listening to Hajime lecture us with a very long summary of the case. But there's no reason to waste any more time on this opening act. So I'm going to end this right now. Hey, what are you... First of all, by messing with all the clocks in the building, Gundam tried to lure only Nekomaru. The elevator was probably broken by that point. Thanks to that, Nekomaru wasn't able to go to Grape Tower, which was supposed to be the meetup point. So he tried going over to Strawberry Tower, just like we did when we found out the elevator was broken. Well, it's obvious he'd attempt that. At that time, we didn't know the two towers were the exact same place. Also, the button in Strawberry Hall wasn't broken so he was easily able to enter Strawberry Tower. But surprise! Gundam was waiting for Nekomaru's arrival. Hold on. If Nekomaru didn't go to Strawberry Tower, what would the killer have done then? Their plan was a balancing act of uncertainties. But even if they failed, they probably wouldn't have minded. They can just greet everyone the next morning as if nothing happened and come up with a different plan. And... Without such a risky plan, they wouldn't have been able to lure him at all. I'm going to continue summarizing the case, okay? Through this, Gundam successfully lured Nekomaru to Strawberry Tower. There's no way he could fight head-on with the robotic Nekomaru. So by pressing the good night button, he rendered Nekomaru powerless without fighting him. Hold on! You... what did you just say? That... I didn't battle? Hmm? What's wrong with that? Don't... mess with me! Don't mess with me! I cannot ignore those words! Why are you angry all of a sudden? You fools! Do not understand! You don't understand at all! Ha! You make me laugh! After all this time, you still don't understand anything at all! 
I don't understand anything. What does that mean? It appears I cannot finish just yet. Maybe I'm just a human destined for hell. However, I cannot finish just yet. I cannot finish! What do you intend to do? It's obvious! I'm going to destroy your illusory assumptions! Are you saying you still have more? You still have room to argue? Your words. You said I pressed Nekomaru's goodnight button. However, that button was on the back of Nekomaru's neck. Hamsters! I'd have to get behind him. It's not easy to get the drop on Coach Nekomaru. It's even more difficult if it's a one-on-one -on -one situation. Just as I thought, truly frail, succumbing so easily to this simple argument, it was just a mere illusion. <laughs> if you want to set me up as the killer, at least surpass your own human limitations. That's wrong, Ganda. You're the one who's wrong. <laughs> Such a wonderful lie. However, I cannot say that I'm satisfied. Listen well, I shall teach you two tips for making someone admit their defeat. First, you must crush them with your own overwhelming power. You must provide a reason that will persuade that human. You have not fulfilled either of those yet. I guess you really don't want to admit it. And just as you requested, I'll provide an argument that'll leave you no choice but to be persuaded. I won't let you! For the Tanaka Empire! With her! Hold on. Oh, oh. Prophesize. I won't let you! For the Tanaka Empire! With her! Crush the David Prophesize! Show me the cadaver! It's Nekobaru's back! Do you really think I can get behind him so easily? I forgot how to do it. I was over here using the freaking analog stick. I forgot it was buttons. <laughs> Even if you didn't get behind Nekomaru, you should have been able to press the button on the back of his neck. As long as you have the power of the hamsters you keep with you. Oh? Are you seriously saying he used his hamsters to press the button on the back of Nekomaru's neck? Yes! Of course that'd be impossible for a normal hamster, but it would have been possible for Gundam. In fact, we saw that with our very own eyes, right? Emissary of evil, in accordance with our ancient contract, the time has come to lend me your aid. Pierce through, Supernova Silver Fox Sandy. Press the button. All right, bro. Now that you mention it, after Ibuki was killed in the music venue, one of Gundam's hamsters retrieved the piece of wallpaper from the baton lighting, right? Hey, with your friends and their exceptionally smart brains, it must have been possible to secretly get one of them behind Megamaru and press the button on the back of his neck. How about it, Gundam? <laughs> Not just myself. But you actually brought up how splendid my subordinates are. <sighs> I have no recourse but to admit it. Admit it? Did you say you admit it? It appears I've obtained a one-way ticket to hell. Fine! Then you must trample me underfoot and advance. Victory can only be built upon a foundation of corpses. You cannot find peace without sacrifice anywhere. He's just talking. Earlier you said hope can't be attained through murder, and now you're without do sacrifice. Now you're saying you can't find peace without sacrifice. Now trample this life, trample it as though it were mere trash on the side of the road. Pull the curtain strings of this worthless performance with your own two hands. Yeah, yeah. Y'all see who really gotta do it, right? You all right? Y'all see who really do the closing argument, right? 
There we go. Here's everything that happened in this case. Let's first go over the many tricks the killer prepared before they committed the crime. First, they destroyed the contact elevator. This separated Nagito and the others in Strawberry House from our group in Grape House. Next, they lured Nekomaru out by himself by turning back all the clocks in the Fun House by two hours. Additionally, in order to secure an alibi, the killer went to the Strawberry House lounge and set the wall clock's alarm to 5.30 a.m. After finishing their preparations, the killer went to Strawberry Tower with the necessary tools in hand. They obtained these tools from the Octagon, which you can enter once you clear the final death. This means the killer discovered the secret of the Fun House faster than anybody else. That secret being Strawberry House and Grape House are actually the same building. On the morning of the incident, Nekomaru woke up and headed over to Great Tower for a specific reason. There, Fuyuhiko, who was at the lounge by coincidence, witnessed Nekomaru. According to Fuyuhiko's testimony, that was around 5 a.m., but by that point, the killer had already messed with our perception of time. In actuality, Fuyuhiko witnessed Nekomaru at 7 a.m. That's also the same time Monokuma Tai Chi begins. Nekomaru went to Great Tower to participate in that. However, because the contact elevator was broken, Nekomaru was unable to go to Great Tower. So he decided to try going to Strawberry Tower. But the killer was waiting for him there. With the power of hamsters, they were able to press the good night button on the back of Nekomaru's neck. This forced him to enter sleep mode, rendering him immobile. From there, the killer began preparing to use the ultimate weapon. First, they set the alarm in Nekomaru's chest to 7.30 a.m. so he'd wake up. Then they tied him up with a metal wire, tied the tip of the wire into a loop, and hung it on the doorknob. After leaving Strawberry Tower, the killer then destroyed the door button to Strawberry Hall. They did this to keep us from entering Strawberry Tower, and to keep us from discovering the secret of the building's structure that they used to kill Negomaru. Then, they used the secret octagon passageway to travel to Grape House. After arriving at Grape Hall, they pressed the button to open the door to the tower. When that happened, the elevator-like floor of the tower began descending, and Nekomaru's body was still inside, dangling upside down in mid-air from the wire. The killer entered Grape Tower to see if their setup was successful. placed a hammer on the floor to look like the weapon, then wrapped a chain around the back door. This was done to make us falsely believe we couldn't enter the tower from Strawberry Hall. With this, the killer finished their setup and tried to go back to their room using the secret passage, so they could craft their alibi when Nekomaru died from the fall. But something unexpected happened. Fuyuhiko, who saw Nekomaru earlier, was still at the lounge. As a result, the killer couldn't return to their room, and with no options available, time ran out. The lounge's wall clock alarm started ringing at 5.30. Well, actually 7.30. To avoid a worst-case scenario, the killer was forced to appear in front of Fuyuhiko with the others. When the wall clock's alarm rang, that was also the same time Nekomaru was waking up. He woke up while he was still hanging upside down, so he couldn't help but sway his body powerfully. Originally, the loop of wire was only supposed to slip off the doorknob, but because there was a heavier load than expected, the doorknob ended up breaking. Nekomaru fell from the fourth floor all the way to the first floor. He crashed into the pillar, which decapitated him on impact, and died. The sound of Nekomaru's impact echoed throughout the funhouse. 
However, by this point, the killer's plan was about to fail, thanks to the broken doorknob and Fuyuhiko. Meaning, the killer is someone who wouldn't have heard the alarm if they were in the deluxe room. They also wouldn't have been able to return to the guest room, because Fuyuhiko was at the lounge. That someone is Gundam Tanaka. I can't think of anyone else but you. And kill you myself! I cannot believe it. I just cannot believe. You, you killed Nakumaru? I cannot believe something like that. You don't wish to forgive me, do you? Feel regret? Then finish it. Cast your impure votes for Gundam Tanaka. My beloved, deadly foes. Let the voting time begin. I'd be bad if I bit my tongue again, so I'll speak slowly. Judging from the results, Yippee! you guys were correct again. Getting four in a row without any mistakes is a splendid achievement. <laughs> That's right. The one who killed the robotic Nekomaru in the amazing funhouse Yippee! was Gundam Tanaka. Nice. Yeah, I said all that without biting my tongue. Now then. Now that we've decided who the killer is, let's do the execution and get this all over already. Hold on. True, the class trial is finished, but that doesn't mean the incident is over. We can't finish that until we hear it from Gundam. Jeez. No matter what he says, it won't change a thing. But I have no right to stop you either, so do whatever you like. Oh, my tears. Why do you want to talk to one who is lost? The loser merely leaves. It would be it would just be unnecessary for me to say something. Listen well. It is what I would like to say, but for honor's sake, I will shall correct one thing. How you guys said I made Nekomaru powerless without fighting him. That, however, is a great mistake. Fine. Nekomaru did fight, that is no mistake. And because he fought, he lost and died. D damn it! Lost and died? This, too, must be the will of If he Kausalis. was just trying to cling to life, there are many ways he could have done so. However, he did not allow that. You... What do you mean? Explain! <laughs> Fine, then. I shall reveal it all. Let's make history. Within the final dead room, I discovered the secret of the funhouse. I Then I'd advise a killing plan utilizing that secret. By tampering with all the clocks in the building, I succeeded in luring Nekomaru to the tower. And this is what happened. Nekomaru and I were alone in the tower, standing face to face with one another. I should say I expected as much from Nekomaru. He sensed my subtle killing intent and instantly understood the situation. And we had ourselves a stare down. In that situation, if he wanted to run away, it would have been easy for him to do so. 
He could have run away or even called for help, but he did not turn his back to me. Instead, he chose a fight that risked life and death. That is... A fight that risked life and death? Let me tell you. He this. was serious, too. He gave it his all to try and kill me. Huh? <laughs> if I had died instead, the mystery surrounding the case would have been even more complicated. You would never know why I, the victim, went to the tower by myself. I can see it! Nobody would know that the victim, me, was actually the one who planned the whole thing. Could it be? Mekamaru really did that? Sensing even my subtle killing intent, as expected of you, Mekamaru. The scorching, stinging, tense atmosphere. I've been a team manager for so long, I've nearly forgotten this. This is great! What a comforting atmosphere! Hmm. And what is your reason? Do you intend to resolve this situation by killing me? <laughs> I am the Warlock, Gundam Tanaka. Heroes, Lords of Darkness, and even the gods themselves flee from me. I am not going to any trivial reason. I'm simply going to kill you because your very existence is an annoyance. <laughs> You'll drench your soul with evil until the bitter end, huh? Splendid! In response to your spirit, I shall kill you with all of my might! I won't go easy on you! Don't even think about holding back! Don't waste your breath on cowardly tactics! Give me everything you got! Nekomoro Nidai, your blood will drench the foundation of my empire! That is... Why? Why did you fight? We were all friends. Why couldn't you stop this? Even if both sides agree, it's still wrong. <laughs> I will not argue. I have no intention of forcing my values upon you. Let me tell you. However, this. I must say this. What's the point of living if you are just waiting until you finally die? You weakling! There's nothing courageous about that. That is an abandonment! A mere feeling of resignation! Just wait until we starve to death? I'd rather have that happen to us than have our friends kill each other. You mean you'd rather die? Fall, my tears. Ever since we were locked inside that building, everyone had been dominated by the feeling of abandonment. However, nothing is born from resignation. That is simply a reason to give up. If you flinch, you will die! Giving up on life, that's just an insult to life itself. Let me ask. Have you fools heard of the term dog eat dog? Um... Cannibalism? Fine. In zoology, cannibalism is commonly observed the phenomenon. Many creatures at some point in their lifespan engage in cannibalism. Listen well! That is what it means to live. If you say killing is for the sake of living is evil, then what would you call giving up on life itself? I shall engulf this in a world. If a world... If a world would consider that justice, then I will fight that world with every last fiber of my being. He's spitting. He's spitting. Giving up on life and choosing death is nothing but a blasphemy in toward life. I renounce you! It is a violation of the natural order. It is the arrogance of humanity. You. Are you saying all that to try and justify what you did? But... But it sounds like Nakamaru felt the same too. That's why they fought, right? Damn it. Fine. That man had the courage to die when he needed to die. That is why he challenged me to our battle. <laughs> Regardless, as I've already said, I do not intend to force my values upon you fools. I have betrayed you all. That is the absolute truth. Fall, my but tears. But even so, don't you think it's a better alternative to slowly starving to death here? Oh. That belief is why you committed your crime? You... And what about the final dead room? Did you do the Russian roulette too? Let's make history. Unlike Nagito, I only did it once, but... <laughs> compared to my battle with Nekomaru, that was mere child's play. Well? You know, after listening to you talk for a while, I'm starting to think that... Well, it's also because you unexpectedly admitted your crime without much resistance. 
Gundam, don't tell me you... You didn't sacrifice yourself for our sake, did you? I was figuring that. <laughs> I can't believe you would ask such a foolish question. My name is Gundam Tanaka! Just who do you think I am? I am Gundam Tanaka, history's greatest monster. My cursed existence is feared by all mankind. There's no way I'd sacrifice myself for the sake of you, fool. Fade like dust in the wind. Not in a million, not in a billion, not in one ten thousand billion years. In the name of pandemonium, it is impossible. Is that it? Then I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> now then, let us be rid of this foolish talk. It's about time the fun started. <laughs> Monokuma, let us begin. Yes, indeed. I have prepared a special punishment for the ultimate breeder, Gundam Tanaka. Please wait. This this is just too much. I beg of you. Please, Monokuma, please help Gundam. Huh? I beg of you. How pitiful. Sonia. An act as unrefined as stopping a man from going to his death does not befit a noble such as yourself. It's time to- it's fine to start for reals, right? Fine. Yes, I do not mind, however. What is it, my four dark devas of destruction? Are you worried about me? Oh, my feared four dark devas of destruction. That is not like you at all. However, there is no need to fear. In this world, I am only a temporary visitor. I was simply visiting for a moment. And now that my duty is complete, I must return to the darkness. That is why, until the very end, pride, conceit, courage, insolence, fearful of nothing, daunted by nothing, let us laugh uproariously! <laughs> that is Gundam Tanaka! I shall stick with my evil until the very end! Open Sesame Pandemonium! I shall fill hell with true hell! <laughs> Let's give it everything we've got! It's punishment time! Dang, man, that's sad. Hey, bro, he was... Hey, he was he was a real one to the end, though. We gotta... I gotta respect him, man. I got nothing but respect for Gundam, bro. Dang, man. What's up? Oh, snap! Well, yo! Dang. Gundam. No, no. Dang, man. Even if the Gundam is gone, the spirit of his parting words still linger deep within our chest. Don't give up on life. Did I misunderstood what he did I misunderstand what he meant? Then what's the right thing to do? I don't know. No matter how much I think about it, I don't know if I'll ever be able to answer that. So pissed off, I need to throw something. D damn it! 
You all spent so much time worrying about each other and thanks to that, things ended up like this. You're all so full of crap, every last one of you. The biggest piece of crap is me. Worst. Why am I so weak? Oh. I'm a downer, clearly. But still, even though we all feel this way, we still gotta do our very best. You are right. This time around, we must move forward. We must continue to live and believe in our friends. If not, you are right. Gundam will most likely crawl his way out of hell, and I presume he will be very cross with us. You're right. You're right. We shouldn't just stand here. I mean, it's not like this is over. We still have to do it. We still have to finish this. For the sake of our friends who have died, we need to finish this once and for all. So. Just stand there, stand up and walk, move forward, live. If you don't, everyone who fought and died will have died in vain. Can't allow that. Hey, hey! So how long you gonna guys how long are you guys gonna stand around chattering? The class trial is over, so it's okay for you to go back and jabberwalk island. <laughs> However, the killing school trip will proceed as usual, so make sure you know that. Wait! Lord, how much longer are you gonna keep doing this? Seriously, how long is he going to keep doing this? How long is this going to continue? Now then. <laughs> All right, after feeling down for so long, I finally feel refreshed. Let's hurry back and eat some food. Hey, hey. Hold on, that mood shift is too fast. It's not like that. Well, you know, it's like Gundam and Nekomaru said. <laughs> That's what it means to live, right? Ah, oh, man. Huh. He's certainly something else. <laughs> But seriously, I'm starving. Hey, hey. Let's go back for now and eat. And then after we're full, let's sleep as much as we want. Right? And then let's do our best again. Yeah, you're right. With this, the class trial has come to an end, and once again we return to Jabberwock Island. The size of our group has definitely diminished. But despite that, even if it was just the rest of us, we did our best to stay upbeat and have fun together. Of course, our optimism is only superficial, but at that moment, we were able to forget about the dark despair looming before us. However, the only thing I was worried about was him. He wasn't there. He suddenly disappeared from our sight. <laughs> yep, I'm definitely lucky. I never expected to obtain so many valuable things from a simple game of Russian Roulette. <laughs> Thanks to that, I was able to learn the identity of our true enemy. And before everyone else too. But it's just too funny, I mean, no one could tell I was lying. There's no way the file just had just Hajime's information. Well, I guess they were too busy with other matters or maybe they reached their limit. Regardless, I was saved. Things would get complicated if they found out. Anyway, I can't forgive this. Damn it. This should never be forgiven. There's no way I could let this run loose. I'll be the one who stops this once and for all. Even if it costs me my it's life. Obvious. For the sake of hope, I cannot ignore this. Monokuma appears! All right, Monokuma has arrived. Who summoned me? Now then. Thanks for coming. What's this? Why, it's the lonely little Nagito. Are you all alone tonight too? What's the matter? So what's up? Your face looks scary. <sighs> I see, so you can tell. Hmm? Perhaps you find out who the traitor is? <laughs> you know me well. Wow. Is what I'd like to say, but unfortunately I haven't learned that yet. Hmm. I see, so even you don't know, huh? Looks like the final showdown is gonna take a little more time. So why'd you summon me anyway? Were you finally gonna confess your love? Hey. I summon you because there's something I really need to ask you. It's about the special prize from the final dead room. Hmm? Oh yeah, what about it? There was information about 16 people in a file I received. But isn't that weird? Say what? What's weird? You don't even know? Well, there's a traitor from the Future Foundation hiding among us, right? Including that person. The number of the total number of students would be 16, right? Isn't that right? 
But the file contains documents that were created at Hope's Peak Academy, right? Of course! That's right! I just reused the stuff that the former headmaster spent a lot of time making. What? If this file even contains the information about the traitor, was that person also a former student of Hope's Peak Academy? Who knows? I wonder... Hey. Could it be... <laughs> is this your doing? Did you, slip a, did you slip false information into the file? Were you trying to keep us from learning the traitor's identity by obtaining this information? One thing Monokuma doesn't do is lie. Most of the time, at least. Hmm? What's wrong with- Oh, never mind, he lied. If it's my job to heat things up, it's okay if I do something small like that, right? Well... That's not my point. Right? My point is, you already know who the traitor is. Hmm? What's wrong with that? You're getting all riled up! Well, you're splendidly correct when you say I knew who the traitor was all along. But even though I know who it is, why do you think I ignored it on purpose? Hmm. It's just like Monami after it's just like Monami after losing her magic stick. The traitor's existence means absolutely nothing to me. <laughs> Their existence means nothing, huh? No, no. Well, that's just how I feel. I'm sure you guys feel somewhat different. Ching. After all, the person who is the evil future foundation lacking who's putting you guys through this awful stuff. <sighs> that's not entirely true. I didn't really come here to fight or anything like that. <laughs> Instead, I came here to offer my cooperation, you know? Huh? Hey. Your purpose is to fill everyone on this island with despair, right? That's why you're intentionally letting the traitor do as they please, right? Yep. I... If that's the case, I might be able to cooperate somewhat too. Right. However, in exchange, I want to know who the traitor is. Hmm. Interesting, very interesting. No, no, no. Obviously, that's a big no-no. I mean, I want to make everyone in your group feel despair. That includes you too. Well, well I knew you would say that. Hmm. Besides, I just wouldn't be able to handle the sadness when you would inevitably betray me later on. <laughs> just as I thought, you saw right through me. You're right. No matter what situation I find myself in, my core way of thinking will never change. In order to create absolute hope that shines brightly, step ladders such as myself in despair exist. <laughs> You're right. You're a true believer of hope after all. I must say, that belief reminds me of that person for some reason. Huh? Reminds you. <laughs> I don't even know who you're talking about. But if someone as worthless as me reminds you of some other person, they must be extremely unlucky. Like... But you're just as unlucky, right? I mean, the fact that you're even involved in something like this? Wow. Am I? I actually think I'm very lucky. Say what? Huh? You don't know? Wouldn't you say that coming across this much despair is a rather rare opportunity? I can't rely on anyone on the island. That's why I have to be the one who does it. If I can eliminate despair on this island, I won't be a stepladder anymore. I'll become true hope. I'll become an existence that can even be called ultimate hope. See, he thinks he's Makoto Nyagi, bro. He thinks he's Makoto Nyagi. He's not Makoto Nyagi. He's not Makoto Nyagi. He wants to be Makoto Nyagi so bad, but he's not Makoto Nyagi. He's Nagito Komaeda. Which I did notice that Nagito Komaeda is just Makoto Nyagi with the words rearranged. I noticed that a while ago. I I noticed that in the first in, I noticed that after the first recording actually. <laughs> <laughs> the two of you are so alike. You definitely remind me of him. Hey. Hey, there's one more thing I want to ask you. Mm -hmm. See? Who are you waiting for on this island? <laughs> Looks like I'm right again. You're definitely waiting for someone on this island. Is this person you're waiting for already on the island? Hey. Well, answer my question. Th that's... If that's the case, if that person is already on this island, <laughs> wouldn't that be exciting?
Dang, man. Don't worry about that. Man, that was something. Um, I know I didn't like Tanaka at the beginning, but I gradually found a, you know, when he started helping out a lot more and, you know, stuff like that, I started to find him more, you know, tolerable. And eventually I started to like his character. And he did go from annoying to funny to me, I'm not gonna lie. I all, since the beginning though, I, all, I love doing his voice since the beginning. But it's really sad to see him go, and I've got a lot more respect for him too. Before, I just thought he was an interesting character, but now I like, I really got a lot of respect for this character. Um, and I guess I see the parallel in the way this was um, a, a suicide for everyone's sake, if you really think about it, which continues on with the, you know, the, the way they do it. Dang, that's just... Breaks my heart. Peace out, guys. I love you. Tap in for the next one. Um, next time is chapter five.